Hello and welcome. This is the Linux Lads. What is up, guys? Um, my name is Shane. Um, with me, as always, I have... Mike. And Connor. And we are the Linux Lads, of course. Um, we have another action-packed off the chain episode for you <laughs> okay i'll stop that um today we've got a special treat uh we have uh lucas the community manager from pine 64 he's going to be joining us shortly to uh talk about all the amazing wonderful things that they've been doing um but first um we'll i'll just go to you guys what have you guys been up to this week i'll start with you mike well, I've been mainly just work, and I've got some stuff I need to finish at work, and it's uh, drag-in, so I haven't been much of anything else, except watching this uh, interesting Australian show called Drake on Netflix. And, oh, there's one thing that I wanted to say. There is an amazing Netflix documentary on uh, uh, on uh, Flat Earthers. It's called uh, Beyond the Curve. It's not related to Linux at all, apart from that one of them actually, I think, uses Ubuntu as his desktop, but... It is an amazing insight into the community of these people who, on one side, some of them are actually quite normal, and on the other side, they believe in this, well, unearthly idea. Mike, so I was, don't want, I don't want an insight into their brains. <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. I, I want them to just be tied up in a big sack and just deposited on an island somewhere, and just you do whatever you want. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Connor? More or less the same. It's just been work, the old grind, the nine to five. Um, not much more ex- exciting things um, uh, beyond that. Um, but I do have a friend of mine who's going to be visiting in a couple of weeks. So I have been kind of uh, researching on her behalf and saying, look at all the amazing things that you can visit in Dublin. Namely, the Guinness Storehouse and all the free museums and various whatnots. There is an amazing exposition of whiskey in the Jameson's uh, distillery as well. Th- that is for true. And we also have um, New Grange, which is a good, uh, it's a Neolithic tomb that's about a uh, burial chamber that's about 600 years older than the pyramids in Giza, uh, older than Stonehenge. Uh, Secondus or- Pyramids. <laughs> our, our, li- our listeners in County Meath uh, might appreciate you implying it's in Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we've got a few. Um, uh, pers- personally, I <laughs> personally I actually do have some Linux news. Um, uh, someone in the Telegram group uh, they uh, they suggested this. They showed me this uh, image, uh, Nextcloud Pi image. So it's a very, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a a lazy person's uh, way of putting Nextcloud on my Raspberry Pi because I've got three generations of Raspberry Pis sitting on that shelf there, and they just don't do anything, and I'm sick of it. So uh, yeah, I went. I I have a spare monitor with a D only has DVI input, so I actually went out into Argos and found a HDMI to DVI cable. I was probably the only one who bought that all year. They already got like two on a shelf somewhere, and this, but uh, yeah. So I, I can't wait to get back into the pie world again. Um, no idea where I'm going to put all this stuff because my room's not that big. But um, yeah, yeah, that that someone was me, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't worry about it. But yeah, yeah, it was you. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I think I just, I think I just, I think I just like. I just sort of, it all blends into the one sometimes. I'm just like, you know, uh, I should be working, but Telegram. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all the same to you. We're all the same to you, Shane, aren't we? For pretty, it's just a stream of consciousness in there sometimes. And it's always when I'm in work. <laughs> Good, that's very true. It's, it's, it's so distracting when we're supposed to be doing jobs and getting paid for doing jobs and stuff it's like ooh, telegram i would like uh whoever is listening from my uh from my work that i am not participating in this nonsense and i'm working my full hours to my full abilities with not a glance at anything as and not work as telegram <laughs> yeah yes but, uh, what mike said <laughs> But yeah, um, other than the next cloud pie thing, I have not had a Linuxy week myself. Uh, you know, I can't drag myself away from anything to do with Trump or Brexit, but that's nothing new. Um, 
Uh, but anyway, um, so for uh, our dear listeners, uh, we have a coupon code for 30% off when you pay for three months of Azire VPN. Uh, they're a security-focused VPN provider based in Sweden, and the law there doesn't require them to log traffic, so they don't do that. They operate servers in five locations in Europe and North America. Um, their servers are wholly owned by the company, installed on location by their own engineers and running Debian Linux. Uh, they provide a WireGuard option, I don't know what that means, as well as OpenVPN, <laughs> and their client is uh, GPL version 2 licensed, so they've got that. And of course, it's available on Linux. Um, they take payment in cryptocurrencies, uh, cash, credit cards, and PayPal. Um, how did they take payment in cash? That's interesting. But uh, <laughs> Plus, you don't even have to give them an email address, which I find very interesting. Um, at the checkout, use the code LinuxLads, all one word. Um, make sure you click the green Add Code button to make sure it applies the discount. Um, that'll get you 30% off the three-month plan. So instead of paying like €12, Euro, you'll pay about 8.40. So it's a little bit of a saving. Um, the voucher is valid until the 1st of January 2020. So next up, we have uh, Lucas from Pine64 with us today. Um, the, he's the community manager for Pine64. Um, Pine64, I'm going to say that three more times. Um, <laughs> Lucas, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Thank you for having me. No, not a problem at all. Uh, we're privileged to have you. Um, Lucas is joining us from uh, London, I believe, is it? That's correct. London, UK. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, uh, have you ever been to Ireland, most importantly? I have not. Um, we have been planning, my family and I, we've been planning to take a trip to Ireland on many occasions, but we never we never managed to make the trip, unfortunately. But we hear that it's amazing. Yeah, it's not bad if I say so myself, but we all say that. Um, yeah, we're, we're not biased or anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I believe we have plenty of questions for you, probably too many. Mm. Um, so... Uh, uh, I'll let Connor and Mike uh, grill you as well. Sure. <laughs> and, let uh, me at him. Let me at him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so uh, yeah. Obviously, the Pine Book looks great. Um, Mike, I believe you have, have a Pine Book. Uh, what are your thoughts so far? So I buy it with just uh, the intention of trying it out because I heard about it and I thought, wow, a computer under hundred dollars. That's amazing. Mm. And it kind of. Uh, exceeded my expectations because I'm not, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting much of it. And uh, yeah. it does most of the things that I uh, that I need to do in my daily life, mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, not work stuff. And uh, uh, except uh, for like browsing some JavaScript heavy websites, uh, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. I'm really happy to hear. Yeah, um, we've heard a lot of feedback. I mean, there's two types of people generally speaking, who who got the Pine Book. And I was the person who wrote the initial post about the Pine Book, right? And, you know, this is, you know, this is a single board computer in a laptop shell. You know, don't expect this to be your daily driver if this is something you want to get for, you know, for schoolwork or for work, you know, this is not the right thing for you. This is not your daily driver. But there's still a lot of people who went out and got a Pine Book and then, you know, in the end were somewhat disappointed by the fact that you know that the performance wasn't up to what they hoped and then there are people like you who came in you know with a degree of knowledge about what to expect and i think that for to a, to a degree the majority of people have been quite happy with it well it must be because uh, as of uh, on uh, on fosdem you introduced new new lines didn't you indeed we did the pro it's a sort of an evolution, a spiritual evolution. I mean, it's in contrast to the original Pine Book, you know, the Pro is actually meant to be a daily driver. It's meant to replace, um, you know, maybe not replace, but be a full-fledged ARM laptop that you can have and use on a daily basis. It might actually run Google Chrome. And, and <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Uh, so um, I, I think, Lucas, what we're, uh, a lot of people are very interested in is uh, almost the company itself, mm -hmm. because uh, for, for a lot of us, we felt that Pine64 sort of uh, came out of nowhere, really, mm -hmm. um, and, and just started producing these very like interesting devices just out of nowhere, mm -hmm. um, uh, which really appeals to kind of the, you know, the, 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 the hacky tech rebels that we are. Mm -hmm. um, 
<laughs> so, uh, like, just in terms of the company itself, um, uh, for like, first of all, like, where where are you guys based mostly? So, um, the company is based in the United States in California, uh, but also we've got offices in Malaysia, and then there is a production uh, line in China. Uh, so Malaysia, the offices in Malaysia are part of a much larger conglomerate of companies um, that are uh, quite known for their uh, high-end sort of audio and video players called uh, Cloud Media. And they used to produce a, um, a line of uh, video uh, players uh, under the name Popcorn Hour. They were actually quite popular in uh, both um, Europe and the United States when, you know, when, when we didn't oh, yeah, have TVs those, yeah. that did do everything and do Netflix and stuff. I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a market. And so Pine didn't come, uh, Pine 64 didn't come out of completely nowhere. Um, it was uh, dreamt up by um, the founder, TLM, and uh, a number of other people. Um, and they started the Kickstarter with the board, with the Pine, with the original Pine A64 Plus. Uh, when was that, do you know? 2015. So that's when the Kickstarter uh, uh, went live and the boards were delivered with a significant delay as all Kickstarters are in 2016. Oh, yeah, that's very, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, it's good to hear a little bit about the, uh, the background of the company because uh, it's not something a lot of us knew a lot about. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like the 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 uh, like the reasons for starting the company and kind of the the ethos, if you like, mm -hmm. um, I suppose the short question here is like: Is it a for profit or a non profit, or what's the aim of the company? So, <laughs> the company makes profit. Um, however, the margins are very very slim. The reason for this is that the vision behind the company is that we make the hardware. And we come out to the uh, community and we say, what is it that you guys want to see? You know, do, do, do you want to see a uh, this type of board? What sort of p features do you want to see on the board? Do you want a more powerful laptop? Do you Are you interested in a, um, in a uh, Linux-based phone? You know, and if so, then what features would you like to see in it? And we get the feedback from developers directly. You know, we want this, we want this. And we think that, you know, this um, could succeed in the market and you know would be interesting to our users so we talk to um open source projects um about this and then we do not do software so we do not hire or we do not pay developers um, so we can have very uh, slim margins and in some cases like with the pine book the pine book is you know we we do not make any money on the pine book as in not a, not a dollar the uh, bill uh, of materials is 97 something odd dollars. So, uh, you know, plus packaging and stuff. I mean, so uh, there is profit involved, particularly with the boards, but uh, the purpose of the company is at this stage is not uh, to make money. It's to build up a community around devices and sort of have a back and forth um, with users, developers, and um, us as a hardware manufacturer. Just a quick let me jump there. Do you, do you disclose figures like how much of what you sold, or is that something that you don't don't disclose? You know what? We don't disclose figures. Um, I don't know if there are even internally figures available. Uh, what I can tell you this is that uh, we have sold a lot of rock 64 boards um, um i dare say that it may be one of the top three with the obvious uh, with obviously raspberry pi being you know sold in their millions but um in respect to our other competition i think that you know we're either ranked second or third with the rock 64s so a lot of rock 64s are out there um, and Lucas, was the uh, was it always kind of the intention to have uh, the Pine Book and the Pine Phone be uh, Linux devices? Like, was that the idea from the start, or was it just put whatever you want on it? Really, 
Um, Linux and BSD devices, yes. Um, I mean, the, the, the Pine phone was uh, manufactured with the specific intent to be a Linux phone. Um, uh, the Pine book, uh, you know, that was a very, this, this was a crazy idea, which we sort of had at the beginning, you know, um, of the project. Uh, you know, how about we make this into a laptop? Um, and, you know, we didn't really know where people were going to go with this. And uh, at that point in time, we actually didn't talk quite as much to the community as we do now with the Pine phone. You know, the amount of feedback we're getting is, you know, colossal compared to, uh, but, you know, we as a company and uh, we as a community, we we're kind of evolving, you know. So you said it uh, was manufactured uh is do you have actual like in inside the company because you are not selling it yet? Do you have actually the Pine Phone uh, like somewhere already a prototype in all casing and everything, or that, that's not? Um, we know what the casing will be. Uh, we recently tweeted the both first the render of how it will look, and we are pretty sure we know how the final casing will look. Uh, yes, um, I can. Uh, I can find the link for you guys if you want to see it live. I'll find it and put it in the show notes uh, for sure. Uh, right. Can I just ask uh, where is the so so just to just to um, you know mention the Pine Phone is the upcoming uh, Linux based phone that you guys mm-hmm. are going to sell. What stage is it at? We know what where exactly is is the project now. It's actually quite far along. Um, our second generation of dev kits, which are pretty much the exact hardware that's going to be in the Pine phone, are shipping um, Monday um, uh, to developers. On the first generation of dev kits, we already have, uh, you know, we've got the LCD working, we got Linux going, um, developers have gotten, you know, their respective uh, uh, front end. Uh, working on it, um, accelerated uh, desktops and what have you. So uh, quite far along. Uh, I th- I think that currently from a software standpoint, there are a few outstanding problems. Uh, one of them being uh, because it's going to be a mainline only phone. Uh, so it's going to be running only mainline Linux, no BSP, none, none of that. Um, so one of the outstanding problems is getting suspend um working in uh, in mainline for the A64 SOC which is going to be in the in the pine phone and the second one has to do with um, um with some 3D acceleration um what i'm curious about is um the uh the 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 SOC chip that's on in the uh, the pine phone mm-hmm. um the uh now, pardon me if I'm butchering the terminology. Mike will probably throw something at me. But uh, the, uh, is that a is that like a custom firmware, or is it like is that something that would be open sourced or like available in Linux repos, or um, how how will that work? So um, the state of the A64 is that it's nearly completely mainlined as of today. Um, there are repos here and there which have not been mainlined, which fill in the gaps. And then there are bits and pieces such as suspend, which are, I believe it's very, very close. I think it is conceptually already working, but it hasn't found its way into mainline or uh, something along those lines. But um, um, video acceleration using Cedrus is is there. And... Um, Although you know, although projects may go with a um, a, a blob, a Mali blob initially for three D, you know, in time there will be Lima, uh, probably sooner than later. So yes, uh, answering your question, it, it will be all mainline Linux eventually. In you know, when we speak in half a year or so. Just to clarify, mainline you mean uh, available from the Linux Linux Torvalds. Uh... A git page on or however they distribute the kernel uh, yes. uh, f- yeah basically everything's open source including the baseband or is that uh, including the baseband you're asking about the actual modem cor- correct yeah yeah sorry i i yeah the, the right. thing that so, makes the calls 
the thing that makes the calls uh, yeah for for me anyway i'm um uh, people call me technical but it's not true like i know near near to nothing about this stuff so yeah the thing that we are not meant to tinker with so you're more technical than i am uh, no i think that uh, the technical responding in a technical way and i'm being a bit of a parrot here because this is this is terminology i heard so i'm sort of uh, you know parroting it back to you because i heard it from real developers but apparently it's a black box so no uh, the firmware is uh, um on the lte uh, modem is effect effectively not mainlined or anything like that uh, or it's uh, you know we have no insight into it it's uh it's a black box mm -hmm. yeah i think there are some regulatory issues as well because i think now again not an expert and sorry if i'm talking too much if you guys have questions but uh, i think that there would be regulatory issues if it would not be a uh, a black box then there would be all sorts of certifications which we would have to deal with as well um, I'm, I'm just reading this off the, uh, there was a forum post that was, um, so th these, uh, details may not be finalized or there may have been revisions since then. So feel free to correct mm -hmm. me. But, um, I think the, the rough, uh, idea behind it is there's going to be a 5.5 inch, um, LCD panel, uh, kind of USB type C charging, that, that sort of thing. Um, would that be a 1080p panel or 720p panel? It will be a 1440 by 720 panel. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, that, now I'm excited. <laughs> C color me impressed. So we have one of those tall aspect ratios. I don't know what the technical term for, for those aspect ratios are, but there won't be any notches, any of that sort of stuff. It'll, it'll be a regular rectangle. They're all black mirrors anyway. <laughs> With the, again, just talking uh, in relation to the specifications, uh, a free, again, feel free to um, say this has not been finalized or you don't know mm -hmm. uh, quite the answers to these. Um, would, is there any kind of um, certification on or any kind of idea of uh, whether it be a, a fingerprint scanner or NFC? Uh, modules with the device no that's a no and a no um as we see it to have a successful uh, linux phone out on the market it has to come in at a compelling price um see. you're targeting price point here. Okay. um there is a, you know we could go out and build a pine phone around something much more powerful that we already have you know uh, such as the RK3399 would be a much more powerful phone, but it would be also be much more expensive. As it stands right now, it is my understanding that even the majority of proper Linux enthusiasts do not, um, wouldn't go out and, you know, choose a mid-range Linux phone over a mid-range, you know, um, there is no mid-range iOS phone, but a mid-range, <laughs> <laughs> mid-range, <Yeah>, five years, <laughs> mid-range, you know, um, Android phone or uh, or an iPhone, and that's just the reality of it. So, in our mind, the way to get uh, you know Linux on um, on a phone exposure, but also and and get people to pick it up at you know we, we're thinking at 150 bucks you know a lot of people like perhaps yourselves will think you know that is the sort of price where you know i can i can give it a go i can try i can see how it is you know i can see how ubuntu touch you know actually works on this thing and give it a go you know when we think that if it would be considerably more than that it would be unlikely that a lot of people would uh, jump uh, jump in and just want to switch especially with the phone you said you are basing this on uh, feedback from your uh, from your community. Do you have an idea about uh, what kind of customers uh, are going to buy this? Uh, where are they roughly based? Uh, what use cases are gonna are they going to have for this? Are they gonna be just uh, trying out different stuff, or are, are they gonna be using it for their uh, uh, main main uh, phone? Is it for like people who are concerned with privacy or more for tinkerers or people who want something unusual? Hmm, that's a good question. No, I don't. Uh, I think that the, at least the initial batch will probably go out to, you know, proper enthusiasts and tinkers. 
people who will be happy that it comes with an OS, but you know, straight away, as soon as they get it in, in their hand, they'll probably see what else can it do? What else can I do with it? You know? Um, but you know, no doubt, uh, people who, who are, uh, very, uh, privacy and security minded, uh, being another group, uh, you know, uh, I can envision that there's people out there who, Mm, who work in uh, a sensitive industry or otherwise uh, who will be interested in this uh, potentially in the future. I mean, one of the things that we're doing with the Pine Phone is that we're including um, physical hardware kill switches for, um, you know, com oh, components. Yeah. So uh, with the uh, with the phone, what you'll be able to do is you're going to be able to take off the, uh, the back of the phone and underneath there will be a number we haven't specified the number yet. I believe that on the dev kits, it's five uh, kill switches uh, for uh, the microphone, uh, the cameras, uh, the LTE, uh, the Bluetooth. And um, one of the things that we heard, uh, or one of the things that TLM, the founder of the company uh, who has experience with Asia, came up with is there have been instances of... Um, data being stolen in charging stations via the OTG port um, in Asia, in China specifically. So we may have a, you know, a hardware switch for OTG on the phone. So, you know, in those places where you might want to, you know, charge it in, uh, in, uh, in a public place, we don't have that much in Europe. I don't know about the States, but, uh, you know, but in other parts of the world, it may be uh, of concern to people. I'm just going to jump in. Um, sorry to bring you um, back to the hardware, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I, and again, forgive me if none of this has been finalised, but um, is there any kind of idea behind the uh, robustness of it? Um, as in, would there be a Gorilla Glass or any other um, scratch-resistant screen, uh, screen coating on it, um, or any kind of water resistance on the device? It won't be water resistant, uh, um, but the, the the screen is uh, is glass. Yeah, tempered glass. And is there any kind of um, approach to do with modularity? And uh, the, the project Ara within Google springs mm -hmm. to mind. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of thing of if you don't like the the battery that comes with it, maybe mm -hmm. you could um, attach. Uh, open up the device and add in a larger battery that you purchase yourself or a better camera or possibly um, swap out the LTE modem for yep. a 5G modem when, yep. when, that, when those networks become live. So uh, these are all amazing and great things. And initially, this is what we wanted to do. Uh, initially, what we wanted to do was to have a, a Sopine module. It's one of the our modules, which we use for, uh, be it in industry or in, with our cluster board. So you can have a neat package uh, of uh, multiple um, A64s uh, in a small ITX package. So we thought of using this module in the phone. And we even had ideas that maybe in the future, you know, there will be more powerful SOCs and people will be able to take out this module and put in a new one. And these are fantastic ideas. And we haven't really discussed cameras and and um, and um, um, and batteries at, at that point, but we talked about the modem and stuff. It turns out that it is both difficult and expensive to do, um, uh, more so than we imagined. Um, and that it would, it's expensive on multiple levels, not only how we would have to construct a PCB, uh, what we, how we would have to accommodate, uh, you know, future iterations of hardware that could be installed into this thing, but also, uh, you know, uh, tooling for the actual phone would prove extremely, extremely expensive. Uh, I mean, I'm talking plastics and, uh, and metal and stuff that goes into actual phone. So, uh, this is what we initially wanted to do. We thought that we can't, uh, you know, reach that it wouldn't make financial, uh, via, it wouldn't be financially viable. So we kind of backed out from that. So it will not be as module as we initially wanted, but it will be at a um, um, at a price point that we want. 
I, I don't necessarily um, I blame you for after that research because um, Project Arrow was, as I said, was kind of a, an internal project within Google and mm. Google with all their resources um, mm. eventually gave up on the idea. So I would imagine that it's an insurmountably difficult problem. So mm. I don't necessarily um, blame you for that. <laughs> Uh, I wonder you. When did you start this uh, pro- uh, process? Of when did you have? How how long has it been since you, the company has the idea to start a phone? And when is the phone going to be available? So we talked about the phone for the first time in two thousand and seventeen, and at that point we, uh, you know, we reached a decision that um, that is probably too difficult to do. Um, that it's uh, too complex, that there are too many hurdles. We, Besides, you know, we're still learning about phones in general. You know, I'm not going to pretend that we came in, you know, uh, we had plenty of uh, of help from the community to understand how all of these things work. And we then we had some mentorship from, uh, you know, uh, from various parties on, on this. I mean, it, phones are quite hard. Um, so we talked about it in 2017 and then it was kind of uh, laid to rest for quite some time. And then we, you know, in 2018, right after Fostum, we kind of talked about it. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do this. You know, how about a phone again? And then, uh, sometime, you know, halfway through the year, uh, last year, we were kind of on the fence whether we should go this way or should not. And then TL said, you know, I think after all, that we can probably make it happen. And that's when it started. And uh, so from then, that would be what, six, seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. And uh, when is your kind of uh, this phone, when when do you plan to put the phone on sale? Q4 of this year. Um, so there are a few asterisks to this. One, we can run into uh, manufacturing problems. We literally just received the mock-up. Um, you know, uh, there are a lot of things that can happen uh, on the production line. And the second thing is, uh, you know, devs are going to get their uh, kits uh, very soon, in a few weeks, and we'll see in a, in a month or two where they're at. Because, you know, there's no point. There needs to be at least one good distro and that it has to ship with something that we will be happy with and we something that the devs will be happy with and something that we and the developers uh both uh, you know reckon that this is something that users will be happy with uh yes so how much i know you before you said that when it comes to the board you don't actually create the software how much of the software for the phone are you making and uh how much is in the hands of the developers of Ubuntu Touch or KDE Plasma and so on? Um, this is a much broader and much more complex question. Um, how much is it in our hands? Basically none. Um, how much is it in the hands of the developers? Well, they do you know, their bit of the stack in a sense. Um, uh, the kernel work is done by uh, Sungsi community, as well as various developers who contribute uh, to the mainline kernel. Uh, you know, within our community, we have m- many people who contribute to the mainline kernel. Um, mm, uh, but as such, we do not have any experience with uh, uh, Linux for for the phone, and we will not be contributing in that way. We will be helping out developers. We will be donating to their projects. Uh, so it is, for the most part, it only in their hands, software-wise. So essentially, um, it would be a, a hardware provider side of the deal, as in um, this is uh, the we're supplying the hardware. Um, Ubuntu Touch would be something that you would possibly recommend, or would would um, possibly ship with the device when when it's purchased. Um, but the you would be relying on the Ubuntu Touch community to develop um, applications. Um, so it's like if there's any kind of Android app integration or anything like that, they'll be solely on the Ubuntu uh, Touch side of things. Is Absolutely. That, I mean, correct? you know. Sorry for cutting you off there. Um, the way you know we think is that there's no point of reinventing the wheel. Uh, you know uh, these guys know what they're doing, and it so happens that 
you know the hardware in the pine book uh, in the pine phone is uh, very similar on many levels to the pine book and many of these guys are hackers and tinkers and they already picked up the uh, the pine book and have been you know playing with it so they know the, the the hardware they know it you know perhaps better than we do from the software side so um you know us trying to maybe hire or you know entice a number of people to build something custom is completely pointless while there are well established projects out there that you know many of them want to develop for a new phone i mean they develop for old android phones and here comes something that is you know uh, mainlined uh where there is a, a strong and uh, you know and we'd like to think a, a vibrant community around uh, this soc and these boards and the entire ecosystem um you know and now we talking to them we hearing their feedback you know and uh we seem um, it seems to us that they're very happy to have an opportunity to to work with us and uh to bring uh, their os uh, to the phone yeah yeah it's it's really fantastic i think because um we like in the the linux world over the last number of years we've had a lot of uh, a lot of pretenders to the throne um, in terms of like uh, mobile OSs and mm -hmm. people asking all sorts of questions like, you know, is this it? Is this the software I can put on my phone and finally have Linux on my phone? You know, is, you know, that is that moment here. Um, but this is really encouraging because uh, obviously, as you said yourself, it's not going to be anyone's daily, daily phone. Um, well, I don't know, maybe stranger things of stranger things you know um but uh, i will i back to differ that actually <laughs> yeah well maybe yeah i mean it could be a great little sidearm but like um but my point is that uh it's very very encouraging because ubuntu touch and uh, you know the firefox os and all those program all those projects that kind of never really took off they kind of have a very uh, a very cool little vehicle now to to for for you to just like it's an open phone basically and you can put linux on it and you can you can experiment with all these uh os's to your heart's content yes absolutely one thing um i i seem to be the guy with the hardware questions today <laughs> so apologies about that but uh or the, spe the specifications of the hardware at least um any finalization on battery capacity uh and possible battery um uh battery life length with uh with any kind of dev kit or do you have any kind of rough um guide on or a rough specifications on anything like that so one i'm not the right person to ask uh two uh we are aiming to achieve both battery life in terms of standby as well as call time you know similar to the iphone 5 it's kind of our mark um as for capacity 3000 3500 milliamp is what we uh, what we think um is going to fit into the case with everything uh, with all the tooling done and the pcb in there oh well, that that's quite encouraging i i can i can only assume the pcb will be quite low power as well so that so, so that would like in comparison to other phones uh, yes, although, uh, you know, I mean, this this will be running very much mainline Linux. I mean, the uh, the UB uh, ports guys doing Ubuntu Touch are running, you know, release kernel 5, uh, release candidate uh, kernel 5 on their dev kits right now with screens and everything. You know, li Linux isn't quite as well um optimized in terms of power management as the BSP uh, board support packages which come from uh, from the manufacturers of the SOCs from the vendors but we do want to do mainline Linux so it, yes it is a much less powerful SOC than you will find in your you know which in your average Android phone but there are challenges and hurdles uh, you know to, to making it actually power efficient. And well, it's the operating system itself. I would imagine that Android is is quite bloated and and mm. drains a lot of battery, and uh, compared to something like um, 
uh, Ubuntu Touch, or even if if somebody was wanting to just run straight Debian with uh, uh, KD Plasma or whatever, they, when they're doing their own tinkering, I'd imagine that um, battery life may improve. Um, the reason why I suggest this is because uh, I've heard of people just flashing the AOSP Android open source project and not having any Google apps and just relying off the F-Droid free software store for Android and they noted a, a marked improvement on their battery life. Oh, that could very well be. Um, I mean, again, uh, the the dev kids are still with the devs. I actually haven't... I've, I've seen a demo myself first at Foston when we were there. We invited them to our stall. You know, they came, they had a, uh, you know, their dev kits with them and with their respective OSs running. And it seemed, you know, to be running really well, I must say, especially um, um, the UB ports guys. They had a very impressive demo and we were surprised by how nice and smooth, uh, you know, the front end is. Um, you know, I don't even know if they know what the battery life is going to be like at this point. I mean, they need to get the second gen uh, dev kits and, uh, you know, so we'll see how it, how it goes, but we have high hopes in terms of efficiency and, uh, and proficiency of the phone. Yeah. I've heard so much talk of the demo with FOSDEM and now I'm kind of kicking myself because like the one year I didn't go. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, Unless anyone has any more questions about the phone, I am also curious as a Pinebook owner about the new Pinebook Pro that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, that should be, that's much further along, isn't it? Is it, is it uh, Q2, Q3 when you are going to release it? I mean, it is hardware wise, it's much further along. I mean, we have real complete prototypes um, of the Pinebook Pro, and the uh, key devs are going to be getting those very soon. Um, at this point, uh, you know, I think that when it will be available is going to be largely dictated by when devs get their OSs on, or at least if when there is one, you know, OS that really, uh, you know, uh, is feature complete and something that users would, um, would enjoy. And also, you know, the, the standard for this is going to be perhaps somewhat higher, uh, then with a pine book because the expectation which we set in a sense is that this is going to be you know your daily driver so um i've been working with i promised uh mr fixit adam to give him a shout out because i told him that uh, that i'll be talking to you guys so i'm giving him a shout out so he is uh, very clever and he's uh, one of the people working on the kernel and um and, and doing a lot of fantastic work for the rock pro uh, 64, which, uh, you know, is the development basis in a sense right now for, for the Pinebook Pro. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been working with him kind of ping pong ideas about, about the desktop, um, environment, which we can put on it. So, uh, what I'll say is that we've got accelerated X, we've got, uh, accelerated Chromium, we have proper 3D acceleration already working and, uh, you know, uh, smooth 1080p playback in the browser. So things are looking good so far. That's amazing because that sounds like a major improvement improvement on the current Pinebook. What, what distribution is it you are using as a base for this? Debian. Oh, Debian. Oh, and any particular uh, desktop environment? Uh, yes, well, we're we're playing with two desktop environments, uh, a lighter one, which is Mate, and uh, a heavier one, which is uh, KDE. So we're kind of toying with both. We'll see which way we go. Uh, it's not so much that, you know, one is better than the other or whatever. It is just getting everything working nice and neatly. We'll be releasing um, this image that we have under a, you know, pre-alpha super preview uh, label sometime probably in a week or, or, or so so people can actually try it on their rock 64s uh, rock pro 64 boards so if you have one and uh, just to recap the pine book like with my uh, normal uh, way of starting from the middle and then going back to the beginning uh, the pine book is going to be uh, 14 inch uh, with a much better or much stronger powerful uh, board inside. Four gig of memory, is it? Correct. And uh, what's the storage? Is it the uh, e- 
eMMC and um, the stock version will have 64 uh, gigs of storage of eMMC, but people who have been with the community, people registered on the forum will get a free upgrade to 128 uh, gigabytes yes. of eMMC. And um, there's also going to be a, a, a um, NVMe adapter available is going to cost not a lot of money that you will be able to plug into uh, the uh, Pinebook Pro and have a uh, NVMe drive uh, via PCIe. Uh, and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 carry on. No, no, go, go. Yeah, how much is it going to cost? 200 bucks. 200 bucks. So, so it's going to have an um, aluminium uh, sorry, sorry, magnesium alloy uh, body, um, 1080p uh, panel, IPS, um, and uh, a hexacore RK3399 uh, SOC uh, paired with uh, 4 gigs of LP DDR4 RAM. Yeah. Uh, feel free to respond with no comment to this, but uh, all of this talk of the Pine Book and now the Pine Book Pro based on the Rock 64 um, uh, chip. Um, one would hope that the uh, um, once the Pine Phone comes out and it's all well established that maybe there might be a, a Pine fo- Phone Pro based on the Rock 64. Um, uh, I'd imagine at a larger uh, price point, but um, just this this talk, um, all this talk about the Pine Book Pro um, leads to the speculation. I mean, we're not particularly secretive as a you know as as Pine sixty four. We we're we're pretty much out there. So uh, yeah, absolutely. There's talk of it and talk about it. And if we were to do it, uh, because we don't know yet whether it makes sense uh, to do it, you know, we would make it definitely around the RK three three nine nine. Uh, so it would be the same sort of hardware that you're going to have in the uh, Pinebook Pro. Um, so it would be to the Pinebook Pro what the what the Pine phone is going to be to the Pinebook in a sense. Yeah, there's definitely talk of it. But, you know, uh, in part because we're learning so much about phones as we go along, uh, you know, we want to start off with something that is a relatively simple device as far as phone goes. Yeah, uh, back... I have a uh, question about the uh, Pine book. Actually, you, uh, I think somebody from Pine sixty four said that it might be possible to upgrade the existing Pine books uh, with the hardware from the from the Pine books Pro. Now, why I'm asking is because I really love the eleven inch form factor of the of the Pine book. I can put it anywhere. I can carry it everywhere. I can uh, you know read read on it on my bed. So. Is it is it something that looks like it's going to uh, going to be able to happen? Absolutely. There, the the two issues which we are kind of trying to figure out is uh, one is you know relatively uh, trivial, which is that the firmware on um, on the boards uh, for the keyboard is com- are compatible with the large larger 14 inch keyboard and they're not compatible with uh, with the 11 inch keyboard and we would have to figure out how to you know have these a set of these boards reprogrammed uh, for existing 11 inch uh, pine books and the other issue is um, is thermals yeah um, the rk3399 is a much more powerful soc and it also generates a, a lot of heat and uh, a part of the reason why we have a, a metal body uh, for, for the Pinebook Pro is simply put because you know we need you know the bottom of the case makes for a large heat sink in a sense you know um, it dissipates the heat I mean we don't expect it to be grilling hot uh, you know but uh, it'll definitely be, be dissipating heat um, by making contact uh, via heat pipe or otherwise with uh, with the bottom of the laptop uh, so and lastly, I think well, you you actually at the Fosdem post you announced so many things. And uh, do you want to briefly take us through the Pine Tab? So you know what's inside, how much is it going to cost, and when it's going to be available. And uh, 
uh, what is it called? Uh, the, the the Nintendo kind of looking uh, thing, the games console. Okay, yeah. So um, let's start with the Nintendo looking thing. So we we've partnered with uh, um, with I, I probably shouldn't be using a trademark name on <laughs> on a podcast. So it is um, it is a uh, SNES inspired uh, case. Um, f- which can host uh, the Rock Pro 64 or the Rock 64, as well as it'll take a Raspberry Pi uh, as well if somebody wants to fit uh, fit it in there. Um, and uh, we've partnered with uh, our Chinese counterparts, uh, Roshombo, to manufacture manufacture it. Um, so uh, it is effectively a case for these boards, but it's really beautifully manufactured. It's really high quality plastic. Uh, it comes with a matching controller with, uh, you know, with uh, with the analog st- sticks and and all that and um, all the bits and pieces which you see on it, including the cartridge slot, work. So the you know, we, 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 there will be um, uh, small SSDs and real SSDs, not EMMC, but actual SSDs that will be you know that you'll be able to slot in there. And, and take out with with game with ROMs on it. So yeah. And um, your other question was regarding the Pine Tab, Pi- correct? Pine Tab, yeah. So the Pine Tab is uh, again very similar in terms of hardware to the Pine Phone and the Pine Book. Um, it uses the A sixty four SOC, and um, the one uh, difference is uh, between uh, the Pine Tab and the Pine Book is um, um, is the fact that it has a touchscreen. Uh, it's a lower resolution device than the current Pine Books because the current Pine Books ship with a 1080p uh, panel, uh, so it's a, so it's lower resolution. Uh, but it also comes with a um, um, a detachable keyboard that doubles up as a um, as a as a cover. Uh, for the device uh do you know how much what kind of a price point is going to be there yes so the the tablet the pine tab on its own is going to be 79 bucks but with the with the keyboard with the detachable keyboard it's going to be 99 dollars. so if you get the tablet plus the keyboard you're paying exactly the same amount of money as uh, as for the pine book is there anything else you'd like us you'd like to you'd like to say yeah, so I have a question for you because um, we have been toying with this idea um, that uh, we probably will be doing a um, we'll be swapping uh, distros on the on the Pine Phone as uh, with from each batch. So the first batch is gonna say ship with Ubuntu Touch. The next batch is gonna ship with. Uh, KDE, uh, Plasma Mobile, uh, you know, post-market OS and so forth and so on and all the projects who, who we're working with. So just yesterday, uh, I was talking to TLM and, uh, you know, he asked me, he said, oh, you know, uh, since the, the back covers are, uh, you know, you, you can take off the back cover uh, of, of the Pine phone to replace the battery and also to access the, the, the physical hardware switches, you know. Maybe we could make ones that we, you know, for UB ports, it would be orange and then to, to match their logo uh, with their little logo on it, uh, stamped into it. And then, you know, we could have a g- green one for for KDE, uh, you know, and so forth and, and so on. Do you think that this is a, a good idea? I mean, there would always be presumably a stock completely black Pine phone available. Oh, I would love it if I could put my own image on there or like a little Linux lights kind of thing. If if you offer a service that for a, for some kind of money, uh, you just print whatever you want on it. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I think it would it would be because some of the people who use these distributions, obviously, and especially the devs, it would be a point of pride of them for them. You know, like look what I did. So I think it's a brilliant idea. And you could possibly do. Um... Um, revenue sharing or something like that and you could have it up on your website and also the official projects website of uh, UB Ports or uh, KD Plasma and say there's a, here's an official KD Plasma um, backplate that you can get and it's $15 $20 or whatever and you could ha- have the breakdown and say um, the KD Plasma project is getting X amount of 
um, as part of this price or something like that could be an idea. Yeah, absolutely. So let me just say that we will definitely be donating to uh, all the projects that we're working with, regardless. No, oh, yeah, I was I wasn't doubting that. I was just with the just the idea of of the the um, possibly selling access branded accessories. Um, if uh, oh, uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if it was UB, yeah, a UB ports uh, backplate saying you have your your standard uh, backplate, which is it could be black or or whatever is standard color. But if you want, you can have a UB Ports one, um, and the the all of them could be on your website. But the UB Ports could say, "We have it up on our website." Maybe you want to contribute towards UB Ports, and and as a bonus, you get these this special backplate or something like that. Yeah, that sounds like a really fun idea. Um, I don't know how it would uh, work from a logistic standpoint just yet, and uh, you know, that's an idea. Absolutely, yeah, cool. And uh, you were saying that you were donate, you were going to donate. You mentioned that you were going to donate to uh, the, uh, to the distributions. Uh, is there a set formula, or uh, is do do you uh, do you is there is, how how is it going to work? Is it going to be a cut of the cut of the sales of the phones, or is it could be is it going to be something something else? The answer is I don't know. Uh, we probably will know closer to the dates as the phones are getting ready and, you know, and we do have uh, some distribution on the phone. Uh, we will probably talk to that distribution at that point. And uh, we will also make sure that, um, you know, when we do this, that it will be transparent to our users as well as, uh, you know, the project's users. So it's not going to be, you know, we donate so-and-so based on nothing or, and nobody knows about that. Uh, it will definitely be a transparent process where, where other people will know that this is how much we donated to, say, UB ports or whatever other uh, partner project we have been working with um do you've any um have been approached by anybody to have any other than the the two that we've mentioned kd plasma or ub ports for example um sailfish os or lineage os or anything like that have have any of those guys had a, have you have a conversation with any of those guys we have been approached by many projects um I can tell you which ones we're working with directly right now. Uh, so we're working with um, uh, UB Ports, we're working with uh, KDE, we're working with Postmarket OS, um, Mamo Laste, I hope I pronounce uh, this correctly. Uh, so these are the key projects at this point in time that we're working with. And these are the people and projects that are getting um, these kits now. Uh, but yes, there has been a lot of interest, uh, especially at Fostum, uh, from uh, a number of other developers attached to other projects uh, who, you know, want to be, uh, you know, involved with the Pine phone. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see how that works out with us. I mean, it's, in the end, when the device is out, it's an open device, um, you know, even if not at this point, uh, they will be very welcome to port uh, whatever distribution or OS. Uh, maybe we're gonna get a you know BSD on the phone. Uh, who who knows? You know. Uh, yeah, just as as Linux enthusiasts and Linux geeks and stuff. I mean, I think like pretty much everything you're saying is just hitting all the right notes. It's it's quite uncanny. <laughs> um, I was just uh, I just I just realized we have been speaking for close to an hour. So uh, I think this. <laughs> so uh, the, this has been absolutely fantastic. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, we can't actually thank you enough for coming on because, like, the, this has just been fantastic. Like, we learned so much, and it's a it's a project we've been following and a company we've been following for for several months now. So it's really really interesting to talk to you. Um, anyone have any final thoughts or questions? Uh. Just maybe one. Uh, whenever, whenever I speak about Pine sixty four, I'm always stressing how it, uh, how I like the fact that uh, you guys seems to work, seem to work from the bottom up. You take 
what you, you you know you bite the chunk that you can swallow and you 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 build up on it and with not much brouhaha you just you know do your own thing and it's very free and very chilled and very easy is that like a company philosophy or some kind of a uh something that you all sign up for or something like that the philosophy is that at this point uh, the key thing is to build a community and to cater to the community um and to you know as as from a, i guess that from a business standpoint is that because we don't do our own software uh you know we want to make sure that we make hardware that is appealing to developers because you know if it's not if it's not something they want to develop for then you know then it's a a sitting duck uh, that you know that does nothing you know so uh build a community and uh talk to devs and you know and hear feedback and even if it's negative feedback you know um take it on board you know see what happened to it with uh, with one of our boards uh from last year with the pine age 64 you know we went back to the drawing board we we heard the concerns of both devs and users it wasn't you know it wasn't doing what it was supposed to and uh, you know we we hope we were ratified that uh, those uh, you know complaints um one thing i, I will just reiterate where um how uh, how interesting this um this interview has been so thank you for that um it's it's been really insightful um if if uh, any of us have any kind of subdued reaction is kind of because it's it's kind of uh being uh, tired from a day of work i presume on, on my point from my point of view anyway so don't think that we're not enthused, enthused about it just because we're a bit subdued um i mean I, this this certainly could be a, a day one purchase for me this is an incredibly compelling device oh, i'm so happy to hear uh, that's good I'm happy that we're may able to, you know, uh, spike, uh, cause these sort of reactions in the community, in the broader community as well, you know. And uh, one final and very, very important question, uh, mm. Lucas. Uh, uh, how many fans of Linux Lads are there in Point64? Oh, at this point, plenty. And you will get some more because obviously, you know, uh, I got to make sure to both retweet this and, you know, post it in the IRC and Discord and all the other chats with absolute pride i hope i did well <laughs> both by the community absolutely. and uh, i hope you guys had a good chat with me absolutely yes oh it's it was amazing yeah. yeah and we i'm sure we'll do this uh soon uh at some point again if, if you're obviously to. willing <laughs> oh yes absolutely this has been absolutely great thank you for having me on yeah maybe when the pine book pro comes out or even uh when the pine phone eventually comes out absolutely and then I'd certainly love to have you back on yeah that'd be great uh so you know where to find me uh you know where i am uh, all the channels. oh yeah that's another thing uh do you want people uh to follow you or pine 64 would you like to share some socials yeah we're mostly active on uh twitter in terms of socials i don't uh, i'm the person running twitter so at the pine 64 um but uh, i know there's a facebook page as well so i don't know what it is <laughs> to be completely honest but i'm sure that if you type in uh, pine 64 in facebook you'll you'll find us but uh, we're mostly we currently have this uh, crazy bridge between discord and uh, IRC, and uh, if you go on the forum, there are little buttons for uh, for Discord and uh, IRC. So if anybody wants to contact me directly, wherever, um, that's where that's where I am at. And I'm also in your Telegram group. So that's right. Yet another reason to join our Telegram group. Absolutely. dot com forward slash Telegram. There you go. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much, Lucas. It's been great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lucas. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this. Um, oh, personally, we all like. I'm blown away. I think that was a absolutely brilliant interview. Learned so much. Uh, Lucas was absolute wealth of knowledge. Um, you know, the company Pine sixty four seems to have the best interests of the community at heart, like in a very genuine way. Um, so uh, I think we're going to wrap this up, guys. Uh, any final thoughts? 
again I just want to reiterate that and thank you again uh, Lou as for that uh, interview and it's really really exciting that they're so community focused and they take the feedback from the community whether it's um, hardware suggestions or um, anything like that they do seem to have put the community focus uh, uh, community in their focus which is is very, very good yeah, I can only agree that uh, it's uh, it was amazing to have Lucas on, and it was it is great that there is company like Pine sixty four, who does all this amazing stuff, and I I'm waiting for them to come up with more. So if you want to get in touch with us, uh, we're on Telegram. That's linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. That'll redirect you to the group. Um, we're on Twitter at linuxlads, all one word. Well, Twitter handles are always one word. Uh, Facebook, uh, Linux Lads, just search for it and <laughs> you'll find it. Uh, Mastodon, we're on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, yeah. Uh, show at linuxlads.com and... Uh, you know, we also exist in real life, so if you're in the Dublin area, check out the Dublin Linux community and come meet us once or twice a month. Um, all right, so uh, without further faffing about, uh, I have been Shane. I've been Mike. <laughs> oh, you fucking weren't. I have been Mike, you prick. <laughs> I, I did that deliberately to see to see what you're saying. <laughs> I've been Connor. <laughs> Okay, okay, it. we're getting giddy, right. we're getting giddy. Time to okay. go sleep now. <laughs> yeah, we're we're getting giddy, so, uh, okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs>